when you're probably going to sleep in about two hours and coffee really isn't the best idea, hot chocolate sure does come in handy. What is up guys, Forrest here, and today we're going to be talking about how to start programming. Now, I know there are a lot of resources out there that kind of already discuss this topic, but I feel like most, if not all of those, kind of just throw everything plus the kitchen sink at you. And I remember when I first got into programming, I was trying to find all these different resources, just how to break on through to the other side, if you will. And I don't want this video to overwhelm you more than you already may be. So we're just going to be talking about how to start programming. A lot of things in this video are not going to be talked about within the whole software development industry or the process or life cycle or even computer science theory. I will make at least one future video kind of consolidating all of that in a more uh, digestible fashion because I've talked about a lot of that stuff on this channel before. But I do want to consolidate a lot of those thoughts to essentially follow up what we talk about in this video, essentially your next steps to take after this. A few things we'll be discussing in this video are languages, IDEs, learning material, although I'll do a little bit less talking about the learning materials and more linking to some of my favorite free plus paid learning materials in the description below this video. And we're gonna talk a bit about how to approach this step in the process. And as for a quick message to those of you who are subscribed to the channel, I have quite a few personal projects that I wanna show y'all within maybe the next month or so. I'm really hoping to get a few out by the end of the year. Some of those are from my artificial intelligence course that I discussed a couple of videos back. And others are some more current projects that I've been working on kind of behind the scenes as some of my side projects that I've discussed a little bit in, in past videos, but I want to update y'all kind of where I am in the process on some of those. And for those of you who aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. Talk about computer science, software development, a bit of, well, obviously about some of my personal projects going on. So take a look at the channel if it's something that you may be interested to, interested in rather. Although English is my main language, it's still a work in progress. First things first, stop searching how to start programming. You typing that into the search bar is you just trying to take this one big problem and just solve it. Just like throw it at the computer and, and you think it'll solve itself. That's not what we do as software developers. What we do as software developers is we have this big problem, this big uh, project that we're working on for a client, and then we break it up into smaller portions, more digestible, more solvable and comprehensive problems. So for example, at work, I'm working on this fun little animated survey website, but I'm not gonna just dive into the animations and hope that I can plug and play. I need to build the skeleton of the survey. I need to make sure that I have the proper home screen that you know says take the test and then it can go to the next question and then the next question after that, next question after that and all of these answers are gonna be stored and then add it all up at the end and then it'll direct it to where it needs to go next. I know that's very vague but I can't really talk about the specifics of the work I do at work. It's not mine so. Just take that with what you will. Just know that if you have a big problem, just don't try to shove it at the screen. What you wanna do is make smaller problems out of that bigger problem, and that'll help you Google stuff. Like that's that's a big part of what we do at, at work as well. We, we break it into smaller problems so we can throw it in the Google if we don't already know how to do it, and Google will spit out what we need after us searching a little bit, and then that's where you start. That's more so theoretical advice, but what is the practical advice that you could be taking action on today? That is, figure out what you want to build and double down on that. A lot of people start off programming because they have an idea of an application in their head and they want to pursue it. They want to build it themselves. So if that is you, figure out how to build that particular application. For an easy example, we're gonna choose iOS development. If you want to build an iOS application, well, the first steps to that is going on Google and saying, what are the tools I need to develop iOS applications? Maybe a few things will come up being Swift, which is the language, and Xcode, which is the IDE. So now, what do you do with that new information that you have that you know Swift and Xcode is what you need to learn? Well, 
start to learn the basics of each. Learn the syntax of Swift, and then learn the interface and the tools that are available within Xcode and kind of how they merge together. Look up some tutorials online, that type of deal, and that's kind of how you get started on there. You see, you see how you started off with this big problem of how to start programming. You chipped away at it a little bit and you see, oh, I wanna build an iOS application. Let me, how do I do that? You're chipping away at it a little bit deeper and deeper and you say, oh, you know, Swift and Xcode are the tools I need for that. And then you chip away even deeper and then you realize, oh, I need to learn the basics of both of these two tools. What are the basics of the language? What are the basics of Xcode? And then once you learn the basics of that, chipping away even deeper, you want to build a simple application. Everyone starts off building an, a Hello World application, even me. I know I titled a video my first program I ever coded and it was like this Hangman application, but of course I did a Hello World application first. Everybody knows that, but that doesn't make for an interesting video. I digress. Let's further consolidate what I just said into a bit more digestible information. One, figure out what you want to build. Two figure out what tools you need to build that and just know. It may not be as easy as, you know, what tools do I need for iOS development, which will just be right at the top link. If you're working on web development, it could take you a day or two to figure out what tools are best suited for the application that you have in your mind. I mean, I spent hours, maybe closer to the whole day yesterday, trying to figure out what frameworks and libraries would work best for this animated survey quiz that I, or survey website that I talked about earlier in this video. I spent a while trying to figure it out. So it's not just gonna be right there in front of you so easy. Could be, may not. Just know that you may have to do a little bit of digging. Three, learn the basics of those tools. And four, build at least a couple small applications with what you just learned. Now, big caveat, you don't have anything in your head that you wanna build. That's where it gets maybe a little bit more tricky because there's no essentially end goal. Like I made in the example, this giant problem that you have in your life that is how to start programming. I don't know how to program, I want to learn. The core of that problem, what you're trying to get all the way down to is learning how to build this idea in your head. So instead, it's more so how to start programming even at the core of this. You wanna be knowledgeable and well-versed and programming. If that is the case, then I'm just, I guess I can just tell you C++ and Codeblocks. I recommend that because Codeblocks is an incredibly easy IDE to use. When I first started off with Java, I used Eclipse IDE, which now I really like, but when I first started off, I thought it was really confusing. Maybe I'll just, um, I don't know. But C++, Codeblocks, you're able to just follow a tutorial on how to build a C++ project in Codeblocks, and then build a small C++ project in Codeblocks. That is, after you learn some of the basics. And that's it, folks. That's how you start programming. That's not how necessarily you become a programmer, because there's a lot more that goes into it, but that's how you start programming. N notice, notice the semantics and how I titled this video. I'm not trying to be misleading. This isn't how to become a programmer. Maybe that'll be in our next video based on the questions that you asked down in the description below. But that's it. I've already asked you to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below. So I'm done here. Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace.